Okay. Let's get the scriptures on this on this on the uh, ship of Tarshish real quick, so I can get that. Then we'll open this up for questions here. Uh, Genesis, uh, chapter ten. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Genesis chapter ten, verse four. Go ahead. We're going into the ships of Tarshish. Why? We have some. We have some people teaching out there, and I'm going to make this clear. All right, and I'm going to make this clear for all the brothers and sisters out there who might be listening to this. When we talk about when we uh, go into the scriptures and it says, "Come out of her, my people." That's not the gathering of Christ's church saying, come out of her, my people. That's not my, myself or another person saying, well, this is what our opinion is, or this is what our philosophy is concerning, come out of her, when the Bible says, come out of Babylon. That's what the Most High said. Now, each person as an individual outside of others have to decide what that scripture means. We're not going to force what we're saying on anyone. But what we believe is to come out of her. Not just spiritually, but physically also. Because the plagues that are coming to Babylon are physical plagues. The plagues that came to Egypt were physical plagues. So we believe that the Most High is saying come out of her forewarning his people and, and believers of truth before he bring the damnation as he did Egypt. That's what we believe. Now, if others believe something different, then we'll, we'll have to see. All right? And we also believe coming out of her that just because you come out of her, it's not over. You still must proclaim the truth and bring the truth throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Now I'm saying that because some people are saying, well, listen to what's going on here. You don't really have to leave Babylon because after everything is done, the Most High is going to send the ships of Tarshish over to pick us up. All right. Now, I don't mean to alarm anyone, but I feel that on these Sabbaths, after we go into the law, we should bring out certain understandings so that you can know what time it is. All right? There will not be ships of Tarshish coming to North America. And that's biblical, and we want to prove that. There will be, I'm going to repeat it, you can hold it, you can listen to this clearly. There will be no ships of Tarshish coming to North America. And I'm going to show you out of the scriptures. That's number one. All right. The news, some of the news that we have. And it's definitely Bible prophecy. They didn't tell you all. Everyone is, is caught up in the Tremaine. What's his name? Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin thing. Barack Obama. Like I say, almost every week he comes with something else. And Congress have okayed a bill now that will have Russia. Russian troops, we told y'all two years ago that there's Russian troops within the United States training, but they're not telling you. American and Russian troops will hold a series of joint anti-terror drills in the U.S. state of Colorado next month. Russia's defense ministry said Thursday that this will be the first time that Russian and American airbo air airborne forces have held joint exercises on U.S. soil. A ministry spokesperson says the soldiers will stage a series of strategic operations 
including simulated reconnaissance of a terrorist camp and coordinated raids. Russian soldiers will also learn how to use U.S. special service weapons. The Russian troops are scheduled to arrive a week before the drills to attend a baseball game in Colorado Springs. A law was just passed where the Russian troops will now work with Homeland Security and certain forces to combat homegrown, homegrown terrorism within the United States. Now this is the bill that was just passed last week. While people are caught up into whatever they caught up into, why? Listen, Russia and China and other countries were part of the bailout. Who do you think bailed America out? So what do you think they get in return for bailing America out? They get pieces of the country. America has been broken up. It's a corporation. It has been liquidated and it belongs to these other countries. So now this is a way that, that they can actually roll out their troops and claim their territory. So that's what's about to happen here. All right. And when this all go down, listen to me clearly. They're going to get people up in these cities. There's too many people for them to deal with. So the first thing they're going to do is they're going to cut all utilities, cut your water, no living water, no nothing, so it can be diseased up and destroyed all up in the cities after they do their false flag. Right after that, people automatically begin to turn on each other. So they're going to sit back and let that happen first as a pretext to come in and bring order. And that's when they will bring in your NATO and your foreign troops who have been there for years. There's a whole Chinese fleet in Florida right now. It's been there for over two years. You had the Russian troops in the Bay Area for over three years. So now, Barack Obama, he didn't sign the NDAA. He didn't also sign the bill that give Homeland Security hollow tip bullets. He have also signed the bills that now that America worked in conjunction with foreign troops for homegrown terrorism. That means foreign troops on the books now have the right to kill American citizens. Okay? But that's not the biggest issue here. The biggest issue here is what they're going to do with these nuclear plants and what they're planning to do all under the country to break it up itself, knowing there's too many people to fight against. Free thinking people are a threat to the powers and everyone is waking up, especially those in the United States. So that's a threat to this order they have. So some people out there teaching, and that's great that they're out there teaching about the Most High and the commandments and all that, but they're also teaching things claiming that either UFO is going to pick them up or either the ships of Tarshish is going to come get them and save them from the UN troops and, 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 from, the, and from the nuclear plants they're going to let loose like Fukushima. The earthquakes is going to come. The plagues that's going to come. The war that's going to come. When, when, when Iran is cut loose, they have taught that through all this, that, that, that some ships are going to be waiting for you to bring you back to Jerusalem. Is that so? Let's go into the ship of Tarshish. First of all, let's start with what is Tarshish for those who don't know. Let's start at Genesis 10 and 4. Start with two verses, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. These are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Who? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay. Ham is the father of the northern Africans, which is... Ethiopians, the original Ethiopians before the Israelites scattered in certain areas of, of Cush. 
Then you got the Libyans, Egyptians, and the Canaanites. Those were the four families of northern Africa. All of Africa was not Ham. Just northern Africa was Ham. Okay? Then you have Japheth, which is the Asian people. All right? You got those like uh, uh, the people originally fr from China and different parts of Japan and, and uh, the Iranians, different parts of Iran and those areas. Those areas are Asians. Pakistan's, those are, those are Asian countries. So that's Japheth. All right? And then you have Shem, which is predominantly those of near Saudi Arabia, the Middle East. Go ahead. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Verse 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog, and Madai and Jabin, and Tobal and Meshach. And so, what, so what is this showing you? This is showing you that Magog and Madai are Asian countries. These are Asian people, Japhetic people. So when those who see Russia in prophecy where it says Gog and Magog and want to relate it to the people who stole Russia. Scriptures are not talking about the, 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 uh, the people who took the land through the Idumean, the Idumean Greek and Asian wars. Okay? Russia was taken by the Romans. So it's not talking about the people who are in Russia now. But when you look at Magog, I'm going to examine Magog for a second. Magog, it says, a son of Japheth, also a barbarous northern region. These are the original sons of Japheth. Then you have Madai. Madai is Central Asia, Madai or Medes. Who are the Medes today? Iranians. Now I know some of our people in America don't know the difference because they all are following Islam. You think they all are Arabs? No. Saudi Arabian, those are the, Arab, the Arabic Ishmaeli people, a lot of them. Okay, but the people in Iran are Japheth, an entirely different family. Okay? Read on. Verse 3. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rapath, and Togamah, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dabinim. So the sons of who? And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish. And Tarshish. Show you that these lands of Tarshish would be sons of Japheth. Now, I have a map here, a small map. Okay. Here, for those who, can, who, who want to look at this, it's crystal clear. All right. See Tarshish? Tarshish is right here, right off the Mediterranean. Yes. Which is southern Turkey. These were the original Japhetic people. All right. When you look down here near Egypt, and you look over here, you see some of the sons of Ham who lived there. So Egypt is going down this area. You got Egypt here, then you got the tongues of the Red Sea down there. Egypt all along here, around, along the Mediterranean. All right. So you got Ham, Shem, and Japheth, which <coughs> Surrounded, the Gentiles surrounded what? The Great Sea or the Mediterranean. And there's many isles on this side that you can't even see because it's a two-part map, but there's a lot of islands on this side, so-called Greek islands, which are also part of this map. <coughs> right? So when it talks about the ships of Tarshish, it's talking about ships that will be coming from around the Great Sea. They will be ordered from the Great Sea, the ships of Tarshish, from the Mediterranean area. 
Okay? So let's go into it here. Let's go to Zechariah 13. So when it talks about the isles of the sea, some people say, well, that's talking about Japhetic people. It talks about the isles of the Gentiles, which is Japheth. No, that's wrong. Because it starts off with Ham, Shem, and Japheth. The isles of the nations. The isles of the nations. Which is the places in which Ham, Shem, and Japheth originally went after the flood. After the water receded. Let's go to Isaiah 60. And we'll start where? Isaiah 60 and 9. The lesson is the ships of Tarshish. Will they come to North America? Let's see. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 9. Read. Surely the owls shall wait for me. Surely the owls shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Most High thy power, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, for in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. So when the kingdom comes, the gates of the kingdom will be opened continually. Why? Read. They shall be not. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles will bring all their riches, all their glory, into Jerusalem upon the coming of Christ, day and night. But first, the sister of Tarsh is going to go out, and they're going to grab those who are left. We're going to go into that in certain areas and bring them back and the Gentiles will bring the Israelites back for mercy. Read. In verse 9. Go ahead. Uh, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 9. Surely the owls shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far. So Tarshish is going to come first to bring thy sons from far. Their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because they have glorified thee. To the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified Israel. Read. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And when it says, the children of strangers shall build up thy walls, no longer will the children of Israel serve anymore. We've, we've been serving through all kingdoms. We've served the Assyrian kingdom. We've served the Egyptian kingdom. We've served the Babylonian kingdom. We've served the Persian kingdom. We've, I mean, we've served the Greek kingdom, the, the Roman kingdom. We're serving until this day. So at that point, the children of Israel will have rest. Now it's the nation's job to build. Now some people might say that's unfair. Well, the nations are building right now and no one is saying anything. They're building for Satan's kingdom and no one's complaining. So it's not like these nations are going to be all upset and crying to do this. They're going to, they're going to put their spirit into this. Okay, they're going to do the right thing. The earth was given into the hands of, of, of these Gentiles for a long time. Now the earth is in a tough state. It's in a terrible state. The Gentiles are going to have their hand in cleaning things up. That's only fair. Read on. Verse 11, Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Go ahead. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. So they're going to bring all their riches, glory, and power into Jerusalem, into Israel. Okay, that's all the nations paying tribute to the king. Read. And that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. So if there's a kingdom or a nation out there or a country who feel that they want to be independent with their new world order and fight against Christ, Christ says what? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. Okay, you don't want to be with Christ's order. Shall what? Shall perish. You're just going to be wiped out. 
There's no technology you have that can fight against spirit. So if you don't want to go along with this, okay. You just, you in the spirit world now. You out of here. That's the way that goes. Okay? Read on. Oh, that's it. No, it's more I want to get out of there. Okay. Yeah. Um, Isaiah chapter 16 verse, 30, uh, verse 12 For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish Go ahead. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted Go ahead. Verse 13 The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together To beautify the polis of my sanctuary Go ahead uh, To beautify the polis the place of my sanctuary. So for those who think that there's going to be a kingdom where where there's not going to be any work, the Lord is showing you the actual trees that would come to build this our constructs. He's showing you the location in which the materials will come from. So Christians got this preconceived notion that the kingdom is going to float out and this is going to be streets of gold and just no one doing nothing. No, it's not that way. The nations are going to come. They're going to bring the children of Israel uh, to the cities. They're going to bring their gold and silver. And they're going to be put to work. Okay, now let's build this thing. Read. Uh, verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, uh, the pine, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Go ahead. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. So the people who have afflicted us, talking about these high officials, these people who are behind closed doors pushing legislation to destroy us. Read. Shall come bending unto thee, and all that they and all of they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the soles of thy feet. So the most high is going to break the nations. They're going to bow to our feet. The same people they've been calling all these derogatories. This links directly with Revelations 3 and 9 where he says the people who say they are Jews and are not, he's going to make them to bow before thy feet to know that I have loved thee. We're going to know when Christ returned that he loved us the whole time. Even though this world have, this world have showed us you've showed us zero love. And it's amazing how on all these Gentile religions they talk about love. What love have you showed God's people? Talking about, well, it's about love. Listen, where's the love you're talking about? Read. And they shall call thee the city of the Most High. They shall call us the city of the Most High. This is also future tense proven that the people over in Israel cannot be fulfilling this prophecy. They're not a fulfillment of this prophecy. They shall call thee the what? The city of the Most High. The city of the Most High. Read. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. The Zion, the power of the Holy One of Israel. Read. Verse 15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. Even though the whole world have hated us. Read. So that no man went through thee. I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Go ahead. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of, of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, Redeemer, and the Mighty One of Jacob. I need you to look at this word Savior here. And what did that word Savior say? Uh, Yeshua. It says what? Yeshua. For those who are wondering what is Christ's name, it's what? Yeshua. <laughs> Is that clear enough for you? You're speaking from the second person, it's Yeshaya, but Savior is Yesha. It's not Yehoshua, it's not Joshua. For, for she shall bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Savior, for he shall save his people from their sins. This is the prophecy of Christ coming. Read on. <clears throat> Verse 16. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am, the, am thy Savior. When, and it thy talk, when it talks about 
suck the breast is talking about taking all they have. Okay? It's talking about becoming totally filled with their with everything they own, including their land, everything. They will own no more land. They will own no more government. Why? Because when Christ returned, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. So their God is going to hell for a while. So all the substance that came with them worshiping Satan will be given back to its rightful owner. Read. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, and thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, and uh, the Mighty One of Jacob. Verse 17. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thy exactors righteousness. Verse 18. Go ahead. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Now you know it's not talking about the Jewish powers. Ain't nothing but violence over the only Gaza Strip and them fighting the Palestinians and going against Lebanon. The real prophecy of Israelites going into the land, there's no more violence. Proving to you that we're still living in the time of the Gentiles. Go ahead. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be more light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Most High shall be unto thee in everlasting light, and thy power thy glory. Verse 20. I, I wanted to say something on this. You notice how all these Christian channels, they use Jerusalem and Israel as a backdrop with this nice music saying, you know, I, and these Christians' testimonies. I went to Israel and I was able to go into the tomb and I felt the spirit and all this mess they be talking. There's brothers, let me tell you, I know people who've been trying to fly into Israel and as soon as they get there, these are, these are people who are not heard of fly. These are people that don't come with no weapons. They just want to, they, they, they're not looking to do anything. They're not, they're nowhere near a threat what these people over there are. And they just want to see the land. And as soon as they get off the plane, there's people surrounding them with machine guns. Putting them in rooms, asking them questions and all types of stuff. And the only thing they're doing is, I, I thought that, I'm looking at the Christian channels, I thought that Jerusalem was love. I thought Israel was a place flowing with milk and honey where Christians can go and see where Christ walked down a road. No sooner as somebody looking like us get off the plane, they're interrogated. But Jewish people, I mean Romans, can get right off the plane and walk right through. Now, is that racism in itself? How is it that a Jewish person who have never stepped foot in Jerusalem get dual citizenship if they live anywhere around the earth? Automatically, if they apply, they'll have citizenship in Jerusalem. In Israel, they if they get immediate citizenship, but our people, when we find out we're the chosen people of the Most High and want to actually step foot on our own land, we can't get dual citizenship. Just to give you a few more examples so that brothers and sisters can see the real world, the, the real world, and wake up from your programming. These Christian programs, Grammys, are a farce. They have the music playing and the waters running down and. People talk about how great Jerusalem is, and I've walked on the Holy Land, and I've seen the River Jordan, and you're like, you know what? I want to one day go to Israel. It make you want to one day go there. And those who you get off the plane, you got 20 guys with all black, black or with jack boots and, and, and machine guns ask you, what are you doing here, slave? But soon, that will be no more. It on. Verse 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Most High shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. We will have continued light coming straight from our homeland. It will light the universe. It's a new heaven and a new earth. Now, For those who claim that there will not be any reprocreating in the kingdom. Let's read on so we can see that. Uh, verse 21. Thy people shall also be all righteous. 
they shall inherit the land forever. The branch of thy planting, the work of my hands that I have glorified. Verse 22. Go ahead. A little one shall become a thousand. A little one, just a little old guy shall become a thousand. See, they want to deal with eugenics. They're not going to be able to stop us in the kingdom, though. A little one shall become a thousand. And what? And a small one, a strong nation. And a small one, strong. A, a strong nation. All right. So I know they did a lot with this uh, uh, abortion thing and all the stuff they've been doing with that. But the Most High is going to all those spirits is coming into this earth. You're not going to stop those spirits from coming into this earth. Now there's more. Sixty, sixty-six. All right. Let's get the next one here. Is it right here? Oh yeah. Yep. Ezekiel 38 and 11, talking about the ships of Tarshish. Ezekiel. Chapter 38, verse 11. Read. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. It says, and they shall say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. So all these nations who are in the Middle East are going to eventually try to come against us in the wilderness. That's those unwalled villages. Read. Okay, how do we know what the unwalled villages are? Hold that mm -hmm. and get Zechariah 2 and 9 for the precept of the unwalled villages. How do we know this is us in the wilderness? Uh, Zechariah chapter 2 verse 4. Go ahead. And said unto him, Run speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Read it again. Run to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Jerusalem shall be inhabited as town without walls. Link up to Ezekiel 38 and 11 and it says, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest. So we're going to be in the wilderness resting. Even while the whole chaos is going out down in the earth, the Most High will have a place for rest. For those who have escaped certain areas, it's going to tell you this. Go back to Zechariah, read it. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 4. Read. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Go ahead. For the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about. So the Most High will protect us. Go ahead. And will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. Come forth and flee. From the land of the north. Ho, ho, that means at last, at last, flee from the spirit. From the land of the north. The Roman Catholic Church. From the land of the north. Flee from the spiritual Babylon in the spirit. From the land of the north. Flee from where? The land of the north. So the Bible is saying in order for you to get into that safe location, that unwalled village, you must flee from the sides of the north. It didn't say sit back and the angels are going to pick you up and place you there. Read. Flee from the land of the north. If you're in the land of the north, the Bible is commanding, read. Saith the Most High. Saith who? Saith the Most High. Okay, go ahead. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven. He scattered us throughout the four corners of the earth, read. Saith the Most High. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Do what? Deliver thyself, O Zion. No, stick around and let the UFOs pick you up. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Do what? Deliver thyself, O Zion. You must deliver thyself, O Zion, that that dwellest, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. That dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. So according to the scriptures, if you're living in the daughter of Babylon, you must deliver yourself from her. Well, that's what the scriptures say. Eventually, they're going to be in the land of unwalled villages. The Most High will protect them in a place of rest through all this chaos. But the Gentiles are going to realize we're at a place of rest, and eventually they're going to try to come against us. Let's go back to Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 11. Read it. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places 
that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations. See that? Now the people that were scattered have all started coming into areas that the Most High put them. So at the very end, those nations, this so-called New World Order, are going to be focused on the few that are left after they have destroyed certain parts. They're going to deal with the masses first, but after the masses, their focus is going to be on the little ones who have escaped and are protected in unwalled villages. This is the wilderness. Read on. Which have gotten cattle and goods. So not only are, will the Most High protect us, he's going to make sure we have cattle. Now right now we don't have it, but the Most High said we're going to get it. And I believe somehow it's going to happen. Okay, if he said it, it's already so. We just have to make it to that point. Read. That dwell in the midst of the land. Verse 13. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish. With all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? So are you think you're going to come to take down Israel again? Read. Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? To carry away silver and gold? To take away cattle and goods? To take a spoil? So do you think you're going to take Israel down again? Read. Therefore, the son, therefore son of man, prophesy and, say, <clears throat> excuse me, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Most High Ahiah, and that day when my people of Israel dwell up safely, shalt thou not know it? Did you not know that I guided them to protect them? So when those nations start coming out, Gog and Magog together to try to eventually get turned into the Middle East to come against us, the Most High is going to say, well, don't you know that you can't do this to my people this time? They calling on me now. All right, now, I'm going to fight for them. See, and this is the real reason these nations are in the Middle East making a garrison to try to stop us from coming back. They know that the prophecies are being fulfilled in which the children of Israel would be in those borders. Those self-same borders. They know this. So now the Jewish people, understanding prophecy with all our records, are now making garrisons and making it where we can't travel freely. Now that we're waking up from their hallucinogens, their drugs, and their, and their psychology. Now that we understand their religions have been a snare and a trap, and we desire Zion. They know this now. Now that we understand that they are a bunch of frauds. So now they're using this terrorist thing to set up garrisons in an attempt to stop us, the children of Israel, from traveling freely. Read. Uh, verse 15. And thou shalt come from thy place. Out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a, and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before Go their eyes. Go ahead. Thus saith the Most High Ahiah, Art thou he? Whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which have prophesied in those days many years, that I will bring thee against them. It shall come to pass at that same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Most High Ahiah, that my fury shall come up in my face. Read it again. It shall come to pass that at that same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Most High Ahiah, that my fury shall come up in my face. Go ahead. Verse 19, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in the day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Go ahead. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall. And every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Most High Ahiah. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands. And, and upon his bands, that's all his armies that's coming against us. Mm -hmm. Read. And upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain. 
and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. So the Most High is going to destroy all those armies from the Middle East who think they're going to come against us. They think they're there for the New World Order, but they're not telling people they're there as a garrison against us. That's the real reason all the armies are going into the Middle East. They're going to first destroy and try to destroy our people like in America and different places with this so-called New World Order terrorist garbage. But after they have focused on, the, after they have destroyed the masses, a tenth of us are going to make it through and they're going to start focusing on us. Finish reading. Verse 23. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Many nations are going to know that the Most High is the God of all gods when this happens. Read. And they shall know that I am. That who? The, and they shall know that I am the Most High. They're going to know that Ahia is the only true God. So these armies are coming in the Middle East thinking they're going to take a spoil? No. You're being brought into the body of the Jehoshaphat. For judgment. The Most High is going to destroy you there. And he's going to destroy all your armies there. And at the end of the day, Israel will, will rise. Let's, st let's stick to the, the, the ship of Tarshish here. Let's get the next one. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah 66 and 15. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Most High will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with the flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Most High plead with all flesh and the slain of the Most High shall be many. Show you what he's going to do to those armies. And the new world order so-called armies, the one world army is battling up just not against us. They got technology that they feel that they can fight against the Most High himself. They have aircraft. The majority of these so-called UFOs you see running around here are Satan's vehicles. Read. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh. So you're going to have some people that, that's going to be in the wilderness eating pork. Read. And the abomination and the mouse. You have people eating Mice, mice, and rodents, and possum, while we're in the wilderness. Read. Shall be consumed together, saith the Most High. And they're going to be destroyed with those other armies that's in the Middle East. So don't tell me what you eat is not important. <laughs> so the Most High, if you got a Christian eating pork in the wilderness, he will die with the New World Order armies. Okay? Read. Verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Go ahead. Verse 19. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish. Here's the sign. So here's where this is where he will send the ships. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. To, Read. to Tarshish. So the people who have escaped the destruction will be sent to where? To Tarshish, Paul, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tubal, and Javan, and the owls afar off, that have not heard of my fame, neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall declare my glory unto the Gentiles, showing you all the places the people will be sent to let, to let everyone know. The children of Israel are free now. The Most High is bringing all those armies together so that he can crush them himself. No army, no slavery. So that's when Israel will be released. You can't, you can't take us down without an army, folks. So the Most High is gathering all you Gentile nations in the body of Jehoshaphat. You think it's for the New World Order and for Halliburton. No. It's so that the Most High can crush the power of your army in the Middle East. And there's a declaration that will go out throughout the four corners of the earth that the children of Israel are free. You can't enslave us without an army, folks. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You cannot fight a spirit with physical weaponry.
Read on. Verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord. That's when all the Gentiles are going to bring all of our people and say, listen, I got an Israelite. <laughs> just, don't, just don't hurt me. Look, I got, I got some of your people. I took care of them. I made sure he was clean. I made sure he's fed. Just don't destroy me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not dealing with Buddha here. I'm not dealing with Allah no more. And I got an Israelite. <laughs> Read. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith the Most High. As the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 21. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Most High. And this is showing you that the Most High is going to set up a Levitical order under Christ. So the Levites still going to deal in their function under Christ the high priest. No more will they deal with voodoo and witchcraft and all that stuff they're dealing with. They're going to be priests under Christ, under the disciples. Read. Uh, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth will I, excuse me, for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Most High. So shall your, shall your seed and your name remain. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Most High. There will be one world worship, and it won't be under Satan either. Now this is the real new world order. This is the spiritual new world order. No more Buddha. No more Allah, no more what, no more Krishna, no more other God that you've come up with. So there will be one God that all nations. And guess what? You think that us being delivered from Egypt was something? The whole world going to hear of this deliverance. Why? Because we are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And when they all hear that the Most High crushed their armies, they're going to know that our God, Ahia, is the God of all gods. Read on. Uh, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Go ahead. Let's get the uh, next one in. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 39, uh, verse 11. Now it's Ezekiel 39 and 1 on down. It's talking right, about the carcasses. Right, right. All right. Mm-hmm. So before you go there, let's go to Isaiah 11. Mm -hmm. 11 and 1. Uh, Isaiah chapter... No, me, Matthew uh, 24 and 28, yeah. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse yeah. uh, verse 25. Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, it shall, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. That, that means if someone tell you that Christ is in the desert, don't believe him. Read. Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold... He is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So if someone tell you, well, I know where Christ is, don't believe him. Read. Verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Every eye shall see when he comes. So you don't have to believe someone when they tell you, yeah, I, I know where Christ is. Read. Verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered there together. There will the eagles be gathered together. Eagles represent who? The Idumeans, the power of the Roman Empire. And it shows you that where, where the carcasses are, the eagles will be also. And when you link this up to the fowls, it's letting you know that their armies will be destroyed and eaten by the birds. He's preparing the birds in Ezekiel, it tells you, for the prey, for the people who are in the Middle East, their armies. That's the feast he's preparing for the birds. Let's get it real quick. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 1. This is where the carcasses is, the eagle shall be also, showing you that what, what empire that's behind all these wars. Yeah, the Roman Empire. And wherever they go, death comes. Wherever the army comes, there's death. Let's read it. Ezekiel. 
uh, chapter 39, verse 1. Read. Therefore the son, of the, the son of man prophesy against God and say, Thus saith the Most High Ahiah, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Verse 2. And I will bring thee back and lead thee, and I will turn thee back and lead thee, but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. And thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and all thy people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort. So this is the future of the armies that will come against us. Now most people would like to relate this to Russia. I went into Genesis the 10th chapter earlier to show you that it's speaking of the Asians. Why? Because the Idumeans are already in the Middle East. What, what family have to be turned back and bring their armies into the Middle East? That's China. China was the original people who was living around Russia, like the Mongols. If you don't believe that, look at the Eskimos that went through the Barren Strait. The dark-skinned Asians who once lived in Russia. Those are the original Japhetic people, not the people in Russia right now. So this is talking about the Asians coming in. And at the very end, you think they're, they're fighting against each other. They're actually there to band together against us. Eventually, they're going to stop fighting each other and say, you know what, let's go to those people over there in those unwalled villages and let's kill them because this is the real reason this whole thing is happening. The Most High is trying to save them. Let's come together. Let's, let's stop our arms against each other and let's kill them. That's what they're doing in the Middle East. They're going to stop fighting each other and begin to war against us. Okay? All right. There's a few more. What time is it? Okay. We got this now. All right. Let's go to the one in Isaiah 11. Isaiah chapter 11, uh, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria. Now, this is showing you the places that the Most High will deliver his people from. So if anyone wants to, to know what places Christ will gather his people, it's Isaiah the 11th chapter. <laughs> Read. And it shall come to pass that in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again the second time to reco recover the remnant of his people. His people who were scattered. Read. Which shall be left from Assyria and from <laughs> Egypt. And from Pathros. So they're going to be gathered from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros. Go ahead. And from Cush. Cush, that's part of Ethiopia. We were dispersed in Ethiopia. Read. And from Elam. And from Sh Shinar. And from Hamath. And from the islands of the sea. And, and from the islands of the sea. The islands of the sea is speaking of the great sea, which is today called the Mediterranean. The Isles of the Sea are the Isles around the Mediterranean when you do your research. So it's not talking about people that are in the Caribbean Islands and all that. The Isles of the Sea is speaking of is the seas within the Mediterranean. Read on. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 12. I want you to read this where it says sea which is Yum. Uh, yum. A sea or large body of water, specifically with article the Mediterranean. The what? The Mediterranean. The what? The Mediterranean. And that's Hebrews. That's that. What's the Hebrew number for that? Uh, Hebrew 3220. Exactly. So it's talking about the islands that are around the Mediterranean, which are thousands of islands that our people will be gathered from. All right. Read on. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And he shall what? 
and he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Now you notice he said he shall set up an ensign. Now remember we were in Isaiah and it showed you that the sign would be us going into those different places. Letting everyone know that Israel is to come back to Jerusalem. That's going to be a sign to different places. The Most High is going to send out the ships to different places and let them know. He's going to set up certain people to do that as a sign that it's over. Read on. Uh, verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Now it says the envy of Ephraim shall depart because there's, there's been a chasm between the northern and southern kingdom. Okay, you have, you have those who would say, well, the, the Indian tribes who went to America and all that in, in South America are not God's people because they are at variance, in variance with black people. But the Bible tell you that that was placed there. When Christ returns, no more will that will that wall be there between our brothers who came there first. We will know we're brothers again. We will stop fighting against each other and vexing each other. That's what the scriptures are saying there. Christ will tear that down. So because they are against us the way they are proves that they are who the Bible says they are. There was a split that came between us and them. After the sin of Solomon. Okay. Go ahead. Ephraim shall not vex, shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. No longer will we fight against each other like we've done in the past. Go ahead. Verse 14. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their land their hand upon Edom and Moab. And the children of Ammon shall obey them. So we're going to take all the goods from Edom, who's over there in our land, from Moab and Ammon, who borders Israel. It's talking about us taking all that land back that's in that region, proving to you that Moab and Ammon cannot be Chinese and Japanese people. This is talking about us taking over the land, the, 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 the Edomite powers who's, who've taken Jerusalem. And even the borders. Moab and Ammon borders Israel. When we left Israel, Moab and Ammon started taking different parts for themselves. So the Most High is going to give all that back to us when, upon Christ's return. Go ahead. Verse 15. And the Most High shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. And shall smite it in seven streams. And make men go over dry shop. So he's going to do what happened in Egypt before. He's going to smite the tongue of the Red Sea. And our people are going to walk over dry ground again. Back into our land. This is going to be greater than us coming out of Egypt. He's going to smite the waters seven ways. And we're going to walk on dry shot again. Thus saith Ahia. Read on. Verse 16. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. That's crystal clear. That's a clear description on how a lot of us will walk in to Israel. Okay. Second Ezra 13. I'm about to say, let's get Second Ezra 13 and 39 because some people might ask, well, what about the Indian tribes who are over in the Americas? Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 39. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Another peaceable multitude unto him, read. Verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. Those were the ten tribes who were carried away prisoner out of their own lands. This happened in 721 B.C. when the northern kingdom fell to the Assyrians. 
Read. In the time of Hosea the king, whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Go ahead. And he carried them over the waters. And he carried them over the waters. This is how the Indian tribes got into the new land. Read. And so they came into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So they took an oath that they would go over the waters and go into a land where no mankind hath dwelt. That's your new world. This is what Christopher Columbus used to find us, to find a path to us, eventually taking us down under the Jesuit order. The Jesuits are a faction of the Catholic Church. The Jesuits is the black cloth of the Roman Catholic Church sorcerers, and they are Jewish. The Jewish faction of the Roman Catholic Church use, this, use these scriptures as a path to take us down by the conquistadors. All right. Christopher Columbus was not a Spaniard. He was only in Spain for five years. They used that to hide the Jewish influence in history. Okay, Christopher Columbus was Jewish. He was a Jesuit. He was a Roman. So he used these scriptures and said, you know what? I know what the children of Israel are. It told us that they would go into a land kind where no mankind dwelt, flowing with milk and honey. You give us the resources and we will deliver these people and this garden of Eden to you. This is what happened in history. So we know that the Indian tribes over in America are in fact the children of Israel. The people in Puerto Rico, the people that's in the Isles of the Pacific Sea, the Fiji Islands in Hawaii, we know they are all the children of Israel. Read on. Verse 42, that they might keep their statutes, which they never, never kept in their own land. Go ahead. Verse 43, and they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. So he kept the waters calm so that the Indian tribes can come over. Now this is years before, this, this was almost 800 years before Christ came on the scene. This happened. This is around 718 B.C. when they began to go over the waters. And it took a year and a half for them to come into the Americas and start dropping off different tribes to different areas. Read. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood, till they were passed over. Go ahead. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely, of a year and a half. It took one year and a half for the Indian tribes to get there. Let's see how they'll come back. Let's see if UFOs are going to pick them up. Read. And the same region is called Arsereth. Arsereth means hidden land. The Most High hid the land. And our people, the children of Israel from the northern kingdom, were the first people to inhabit it. Read. Verse 46. Then shall they, excuse me, then bought they there until the latter time. And now when they shall begin to come. When the Most High begin to wake them up again. Read. The highest shall stay the springs of the stream again. He's going to calm the waters again, showing you that those ships are going to come over the waters. And he's going to calm the springs again. Read. That they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. So the Most High is going to have those tribes that went over there. A remnant of them is going to come back the same way they went over. They're not, they're not going to come back in planes or UFOs. They're going to be regular ships. But not from the place we call Babylon. How do we know? The Bible tells us that once this happens to Babylon, this last bit of prophecy, no man or beast will be left there. Let's get that in Jeremiah. No man or beast. So how can, how can ships of Tarshish get someone when there's no one left to be gotten? Another thing. Yes, sir. Does, is that saying that they'll be got by the ships, though, or they'll come out by themselves? Isn't that saying something? Different? Well, it tell you that, that the Most High is going to send the ships of Tarshish. Okay. Now, 
they could have some shifts themselves also. But we know that's going to be the way of travel. They're going to come through with ships. Do you understand? That is a good question. I'm going to look into that more. But we know they're not going to come over. It's not going to be uh, what you would call a, 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 a miracle phenomenon that these people will come back over. You understand? Now, this could be this. This also could be encompasses where the Gentiles will bring some of the children of Israel over for mercy. So they could be helping with ships to bring them over. You understand? But we know that these ships are the are over the waters because he will stay the springs again. He will calm the waters again for those tribes to start making their way back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. See that? Yeah. When you say the ships of Tarshish, is that referring to the, the people being Asians or the, no. the area? It's talking about because that whole area was known for a haven of ships. So many ships border that whole region that you can get many people just by sending out the ships of Tarshish. You can get many people because it's the whole thing. It, it is a port with thousands and thousands and thousands of ships. You got that? And that region borders what? The land of Israel and everything. You got Egypt right there. That whole region, you can take those ships and go right around and hit all those areas and bring them right into Israel. So the Mediterranean is in proximity of that. And when it tell you about uh, 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 the majority of the waters will be turned to blood, when you do the precepts, the Mediterranean Sea will be almost the only sea that's not tainted at the very end. It will be a, a, it still will be a clean sea there. So if you look at the waters, like the bodies of the Atlantic, the bodies of the uh, Pacific, the bodies of water, the majority of that will be done through radiation and everything else. If you look at the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean is actually held in like a big pond to itself, separated. You, you understand? So the Most High is going to keep the Mediterranean clean. Yes, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Location? Okay, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Um, let's get that. And in, in Jeremiah, right? Which mm -hmm. says, read it. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse uh, 1. Go ahead. Uh, the word of the Lord that spake against Babylon, against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations, and publish, and shut up, set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Mordok is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces, for out of the north there shall come up a nation which shall make her land desolate. Now we know out of the north is talking about Persia or the Medes. You can link that in with 13th chapter, Isaiah 13, which is speaking of the Iranians. Go ahead. And then none shall dwell therein. And none, read, read, read it again. And none shall dwell therein. Say it again. And none shall dwell therein. That means after the Iranians get cut loose on that country, no people will dwell there anymore. Now, how do we know this is not talking about ancient Babylon? After the war between the Persians and the ancient Babylonians, there were still people living in Iraq. There were still people living in Babylon after that. So this is a future prophecy of the Medes coming up again. Against the modern day Babylon. And no people will be left after this. And you notice when George Bush did what he did in Iraq. The first thing they did with, with uh, uh, Saddam Hussein's palace. They took all his, his idols out for themselves. All the genie bottles and all that magic stuff he had. They took all that stuff. So that they can become the power. So that they can use those guys. This is what these guys deal with. So the Most High says that their power will be broken. Their gods will be broken. And no one will be left. Read that again. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 3. Read. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her. That's Iran. And you notice that's being brewed right now. Read. Which shall make her land desolate. Desolate means no people. Read. And none shall dwell therein. How many people shall be left there? And none shall dwell therein. None shall dwell therein. So if there's no people, 
how can ships get people from there? Read. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. They shall depart, both man and beast. Now, either you voluntarily depart, or you deal with the different, you, you deal with what's coming. And that's why the Most High said, come out of my, of, come out of my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, nor receive of her plagues. That's what the Most High, the God of Israel, is saying. Okay? So I hope we help you with some of the geographical locations. All right? And, you, and also you need to notice the fact that the same areas in the Middle East in which the New World Order, the new powers, the NATO troops are trying to topple are the same areas in which the Most High said he would begin to gather some of his people. You think that's a coincidence? We're in at the last time and they're trying to put a garrison around the same places we will be delivered from? See, this war on terror is not about the terrorists that, that are operating within the earth. All terrorists in the earth are government created. The reason they're calling us terrorists is not because of what we're doing. They know that once Christ returns, he's going to set up those of us who are following him to terrorize the earth. That's, that's the terrorists they, they are afraid of. They are afraid of what we will become upon Christ's return. All right. So we hope you have some understanding on the ships of Tarshish. We are, we're here at 2, 2 p.m. Eastern and we're going to yield because it's pretty late where we are. So we hope, brothers and sisters, you got some understanding, and I'm glad we were able to bring that forth. Thank you, Brother Lawyer, for, yes, sir. Yes, sir. for grabbing what you had to grab there. And what we'll do real quick, we'll open this up for questions, and then we'll, we'll yield it to the brothers back. Uh,